Church online church service. It is the end of May and we are joining again for another online service. We are part of the community church as I just said and we usually meet in Honiton and Sidmouth um, but since this whole thing has began we have done church online. So this is our church service and we meet here every Sunday morning. So you are really welcome. My name is Rebecca and this is my husband Dan and we are hosting you this morning. Um, if this is your first time or you're on catch up, you are really welcome to join us in a time of worship and a time to hear and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, um, like Rebecca said, if this is your first time, you are more than welcome. Um, if you don't know how this morning's going to work, we just will run through the quick uh, lineup this morning. We're going to be talking until about half past ten this morning, um, just giving you time to to set up your TVs, your phones, whatever you're watching on, uh, to make yourself a cup of tea, finish your cereal. <laughs> um, uh, and then from about half past 10, we're gonna kick off the meeting with some worship time with Ollie. And he's gonna play about three or four songs. And then after that, Adrian is gonna be bringing the word. He's gonna be continuing our series throughout Elijah. Elijah called Only Human. Yeah. Um, after that we're going to go back to Ollie for another song of worship and then back to Adrian again for a time of prayer where we can all join and pray together um, and then you'll be back with us for some goodbyes and some notices after that. So hopefully you've all been able to get outside this week and enjoy some of the sunshine. It's actually half term this week isn't it? May half term which Usually I normally work in a school. I'm um, on maternity leave at the moment with my daughter, our daughter Esther, who's asleep upstairs at the moment. But um, yeah, it's weird when May half term rolls around, you think, oh, we're, we're nearly there. We're nearly at the summer holidays. But obviously it looks very different this time. So hopefully children, you've been able to enjoy a little bit of rest, not so much schoolwork going on this week and amazing weather to be able to enjoy some time outside. Now my main task this week has been trying to teach Esther that keeping her hat on when she's out in the sun is important because she's just learned to take her hat off. So this week's challenge children, I hope you're listening, is I want you to go around your house and see how many things you can balance on the top of your head without them falling off. Adults you can join in too, any books you can put on your head and we want to see pictures on our church connected Facebook page as well. So there you go, challenge, it's begun. Um, you might find that you've been uh, quite bored or with not much to do over the these past few weeks with um, a lot of you aren't going to be working. Um, but I think the church has had quite a few things to get involved in over these few weeks. We've got things like our Teaching Tuesdays, um, the Sunday morning services, there's a prayer meeting every week on a Thursday. But one thing for your diaries that is not going to be repeating every week. So it is tonight. We are having a church quiz. Um, pub quiz, I think it's called, isn't it? A church pub quiz. Mm. There you go. Um, and the details should pop up on your screen now. We've had these quizzes a few times before. They're good fun. And they are, they are good. It's a nice evening to get together with your friends, to drink wine and eat mm. cheese. The last pub quiz, the last oh, proper pub, ago, pub quiz, yeah, um, 
Our team won. We won. So we're going to win this one again. Um, we're going to get old Ian Westron on FaceTime to tell us all the answers because he was our key team member. <laughs> we had an advantage last time of Ian on our team. He, they'd only just joined the church, I think, him and his wife, and um, we nabbed him as quick as we could, but we didn't know. His and his brain skill. was just full of knowledge. Very good. So. <laughs> Quiz night, if that's your thing, um, more details on the screen and it's tonight, so don't book anything else. So this week I have been able to chat to a few different people actually, um, a few different members of the church and I've been asking them about their spiritual life. I've been asking them, have they seen improvements since the coronavirus hit, since we went into lockdown, since things got a little bit harder. Um, and I thought that, that would be a really good thing for us to discuss over our coffee time um, this morning before we kick off with church. And um, perhaps you want to use the comment feature, perhaps you want to chat in the comments and talk about, you know, if you've seen any improvements with your prayer life or your Bible time or your quiet time, or if maybe you've got three kids at home and you're thinking, how do I do all of this? Maybe it's been trickier for you. Um, do comment, let us know, um, chat amongst yourselves and we're going to share a couple of um, the answers that I found this week. So one of the people we asked was uh, of the older spectrum of people in our church. He is a lovely man and he is retired. I wish I was retired. But very busy. But yeah, he's Does retired everything. but is even more busy now. <laughs> but this is what he said. He said it's affected it for the better. Praying more, attending more prayer meetings, the online ones, chatting, chatting more about spiritual things, getting into new habits. Um, as people post videos online, um, we are missing human interaction though. Mm. I don't know if everyone is missing human interaction, but he is. <laughs> it's funny, we had our youth meeting. We um, meet with the youth of our church every Friday and Sunday actually um, with some of the older youth and um, we were talking about actually some people are finding this really hard and one of the um, youths were thinking actually it's not that hard I you know I do my school work I play chat to my friends on um, the computer life's not changed he's quite an introvert um, so some of us aren't struggling that much but some of us extroverted people who like human contact who like to hug it's quite hard so we asked the next person is actually a key worker um, and they ha their life is very busy. They've got a very busy role within the NHS. And they said this about their spiritual life. I have noticed his hand more in my work and daily strength. I seek him more and listen to his voice more. I shoot up arrow prayers throughout the day. And there are a lot of changes in my job though. And I do feel like I'm reading more work related things and going to more meetings and reading more stuff like that rather than longer times in his word and the quiet times. So that is a positive, more prayer time, more time to just shoot up those prayers, seeing his hand and things, but also tricky to juggle when you've got a lot on your mind. Um, so yeah. Another person we asked, I can't remember who this was, but um, before lockdown I used to say, when I have more time, I'll read the Bible and pray more. Then lockdown came and I had all the time, but the problem wasn't not having the time, it was actually with me. Um, but working with friends has helped combat this. Bible studies instead of daily commute, um, lots more to work on, but it's a great start. Yeah, I think people in general um, seem to be spending a lot more digging into things online and social media, whether it's a morning worship with really been enjoying um, a half past day every day there's a guy who does half an hour of worship every morning and it's live worship he plays his guitar he brings some scripture and we've been putting that on just Esther and I dance at work and we've been putting that on while we have our breakfast and that's been really good we weren't doing that before so things like that are out there now we've got book clubs morning bible studies there's so much going on out there um, for us to do from our homes and speaking of which, we do have our Teaching Tuesdays. Dan did mention it earlier, um, but we are continuing that on Tuesdays. They come out at half past seven and they are on our Facebook page and we're currently studying the Apostles' Creed and trying to memorise it as well, which isn't so easy. We have been studying the Book of Amos before that. Mm. So if you missed any of them, you can find them all on one of the Facebook pages. There's so many. Hello there. 
prime meeting. Um, on Thursday, this coming Thursday, um, as I said before, we have prayer meetings um, every week, and this one with different times each week, and this one is going to be at lunchtime. I think it's about 12 o'clock. Um, and they're just, they're just quick prayer meetings. They normally last about half an hour over Zoom. Um, if you more information will be popping up on the screen if you'd like to know how to attend um, one of the prayer meetings. We have said there's quite a lot of things happening on Zoom and if you're not familiar with Zoom yet, it, it wasn't really around before lockdown or maybe it was but we weren't aware of it. But we've done loads of stuff on Zoom. Um, but if you are not so computer literate or you just would prefer to not go on Zoom, then there are ways that you can just ring a number and be involved in the prayer meetings and such things like that. We are going to get started in about five minutes time now. Um, hopefully you're settling down and ready for church to start. Um, you've got yeah, about five minutes and you can finish a bowl of cereal, <laughs> grab another cup of tea or a coffee. Um, but we've been doing these meetings for about nine or ten um, weeks now and they seem to be going well as so long as technology has worked. So we're sort of getting into a bit of a, a rhythm and they've, been, they've been good, haven't they? Yeah, I think our rhythm we've really noticed has changed quite a lot. Um, we're part of the Sidmouth site, which has been going for, it'll be two years in September. And um, we've been growing uh, in numbers in that site, but it is quite busy. There's a lot of roles to be filled. And often our Sunday mornings are, I dare say, quite rushed. And I, I don't enjoy being rushed, but they're quite rushed. We have to get out the door for a certain time. We're putting toast in our mouth while in the car. And if we're serving, it's even madder. But the, we've actually, been really blessed in this time to slow down and something that we've been learning is to slow down and to take our time and we don't need to hurry hurry is not good so maybe this Sunday morning you want to um, turn off your phone limit distractions get your notebook ready come and ask God to speak to your life to speak into your heart to quiet and quiet your mind maybe there's been loads of stuff going on this week that you just can't you don't want to think about Ask God to quiet your mind and to get him ready, for him to get you ready to receive his word as Adrian speaks to us. Um, God's ready. God's ready, but we're not always ready. <laughs> if you are just joining us this morning, you are more than welcome. We're going to get started in another three minutes or so, so you've still got a bit of time just to make sure your technology's working and to get another cup of tea. Um, when we used to meet on a Sunday morning, each morning we'd pass around an offering bucket and that was an opportunity for us to give um, money back to the church and what the church are doing in our communities and the rent of buildings and things like that. And as Christians we believe that everything we have is from God and it is a gift from, gift from Him and so all of our money really doesn't belong to us. We can't keep it when we're gone and so um, we, one of our ways we worship is to give that money back to God and to trust him with the things that he's already given us. So um, a lot of people give by standing order and that's great and we're really uh, grateful for that. But if you, if you don't give by standing order and you used to give in the offering buckets and you'd like to give to something um, and you'd like to give some money to the church, then the details are on our website and that is www.thecommunitychurch.co.uk forward slash giving. So we only have a couple of more minutes to go now. Um, so I will quickly talk about life groups. Um, life group is a key moment of the week for us. We have our life group Wednesday night, middle of the week, and it has been great. We, we've loved going to life group anyway. And then um, since lockdown, we've both been able to go because um, one of us hasn't had to stay at home with um, Esther. So it's been really nice, a time to share, have fun. Um, we've had some crazy nights this last couple of weeks, but also to share testimonies, get to know each other a bit better, do communion together. And all of that via Zoom, just sitting at home. Most of the time I'm in my pyjamas. And if you weren't part of a life group before lockdown and you're thinking that maybe you would like to be, then please do mail the office at office at thecommunitychurch.co.uk and get plugged in. 
life groups are such a key part of our church life and especially now we're not getting able to see each other face to face, meet up for coffees and things. It's a really easy way to stay accountable, to become more intimate and get deeper friendships with people. Um, so yeah, do get plugged into a life group. Don't have long now, half, half a minute. Cool, yeah. Um, Rebecca said that she usually goes to a life group in her pyjamas. Last week, we went dressed as each other. We went dressed as each other. And you I, don't want to see pictures. Yeah, it was <laughs> entertaining, but not pretty. <laughs> Very amusing, though. Very revealing. Very Is revealing, it? yeah. yeah. <laughs> too much, too much was seen. Our poor life group. Um, okay, we're going to be kicking off the uh, our meeting now. Um, <clears throat> if you're joining us, you're more than welcome. We are part of the community church. Um, we have two sites for our church, in one in Honiton and one in Sidmouth. We go to the Sidmouth one, yep. or at least we did before oh, lockdown. Um, but we are one church and we're all meeting together now online. Uh, if you weren't here at the when the video started, I'll run through a quick um, timeline for this morning. We um, We're going to hand over to Ollie. Now he's going to lead us in a time of worship for about three or four songs. Um, and then Adrian is going to open the Bible and uh, uh, lead us in a word from, or about Elijah. We've been going through a series on Elijah called About Only Human, About Human? Only Human, I think it's called. Only Human. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, we obviously pay attention. We do, <laughs> we do. And then going back to Ollie for another song after Adrian. And then back again to Adrian, who's going to lead us in a time of prayer. And that's a good opportunity for us all to gather together and pray at the same time. And then you'll see our lovely faces again after that. And we'll give you some final notices and say our goodbyes. So anyway, we are going to hand over to Ollie now and see if he's in his garden or in his home. Thanks very much to Ollie. Thanks guys, morning everyone, and um, welcome back to our tree nursery this morning, uh, where things are, to be honest, pretty dry. Um, we've been praying quite a lot this week about um, uh, <laughs> making sure that everything's watered enough, so it's looking okay at the minute, but it's pretty stressful. Um, but just just really comforted by these words um, uh, this week and um, from Romans 8 which is very well known but Romans 8 28 says and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose and um, yeah I just really feel with we're, we're sort of struggling this week with with water and everything but we can be assured that God works for our good and um, I've just been really comforted in 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 knowing that and we've been praying about water and it looks like we're gonna we're making inroads into securing enough so god god is providing for us um in this in this tricky time but we're gonna we're gonna celebrate and we're gonna pray and we're gonna uh, worship this morning um it's it's time to just rejoice and sing we're gonna sing happy day so here we go the greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive.
forever change, Father. We believe that it's not just something that we're doing, Father. We believe that we can put our trust in you, Father, and that we are forever changed.
going through these difficult times and having these problems with watering, just to really get a sense that God is God reigns through it all. So um, we're just going to sing Our God Reigns. The God of time and eternity orchestrates our history. Our God, He reigns forever. At His command, the whole world was made. In His love, He came down to save. Our God, He reigns. Thank you, God. Thank you that you reign over all of us, Father. Thank you that, you know, we can look to you and that you will provide for us, Father, and that you work for the good of those who believe in you and, and seek you, Father God. Yeah, I pray. Thank you. Amen. Okay, right. Adrian, back to you. Hi, everyone. Again, it's great to be together this morning for worship and prayer and to look at God's word. And we're continuing with our preaching series, looking at the Old Testament prophet Elijah. And what we saw uh, last week was after the high of Mount Carmel, where God sends fire from heaven, that actually Elijah sinks really low. He's in despair and depression. He's hiding away from the evil queen Jezebel. And in that moment, God speaks to him but not in a big dramatic way with thunder and lightning, but in a gentle whisper. And I want us today to look at what God said to him. And so we're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 15. The Lord said to Elijah, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. 
also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat from Abel Meholah, to succeed you as prophet. And so, verse 19, so Elijah went from there and found Elisha. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. And Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I'll come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and he gave it to the people and they ate. And then he set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. Father, we thank you for your word and thank you for your presence with us wherever we are scattered uh, in different locations. But you are with us. And so our prayer is that we look at, as we look at your word together, that you would speak to us, encourage us, uh, stir us, challenge us. Uh, Lord, have your way amongst your people, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Well, the first thing we notice in this story is that is that God is not done with Elijah. God has a lot more for him to do. And Elijah's weaknesses and Elijah's failings are not the end of the story. In fact, God sends him, go and appoint some kings, this king over that nation, that king over that nation, and even go and appoint Elisha to be your successor as a prophet uh, over the nation of Israel. And I think that's remarkable. We might uh, think after seeing Elijah's fear and Elijah's uh, depression that actually why would God want to copy Elijah's leadership? But no, God is not done with him. We see uh, all around us in the world, especially in in, uh, public roles, in politics or in the TV and so on. When someone makes a mistake, there's cries for they must resign and they're not fit for office and so on. Uh, But actually God doesn't treat people like that. Actually, if, if we were treated according to the mistakes that we've made, then where would we all be? But no, God picks up Elijah and says, come on, I've got more for you to do. And on the cross, Jesus took all our failures and all our mistakes and our weaknesses that God might restore us and might send us out to do his purposes. Hopefully with a bit more humility than before, hopefully having learned some lessons and uh, hopefully a bit more dependent upon God. But nevertheless, God sends us out. And God sends Elijah out to call Elisha to follow him as his disciple, that Elisha would become a leader and a prophet to the nation of Israel. And as Christians, we are called to both be disciples and to make disciples. We're called to learn and grow in our own faith, and we're called to help others learn and grow alongside us in community. And so behind every church mission statement or church vision statement stands what's called the Great Commission. In Matthew 28, Jesus told his followers, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And discipleship is throughout the Bible, this passing on of what God has entrusted to us, a passing on of the gospel, of the good news, not keeping it to ourselves. No, no, passing it on to others, teaching others, training others, raising up others helping others grow. We see it obviously in the leadership of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus. He gathered 12 and he uh, invested in them and gave them time and he raised them up. We see it in the early church, passing on the message, training women, training women, men, training men. We see people raising up others and we're called to, to, to both be disciples and to make disciples. And that's the first thing we see with with Elijah, that God isn't done with him, but God's got a plan for him. And part of that is that he would reproduce his own ministry, reproduce what God's put into him, that he would reproduce that in others, reproduce that in Elisha. And we'll see a little bit later how he does that. Actually, they're actually quite similar. Elisha picks up a lot of things from Elijah. And we want to be a people who are making disciples of others, teaching others, raising up others. 
We want to be growing ourselves in our own walk with God, of course, but we also want to be training up others. And so even in this season, we don't want that to end. It's part of our vision of who we are. As, as Christians and as a church, we want to grow through discipleship. And so, and so my challenge to, you, to both you and myself, how, how am I growing? How are we growing in our walk with God? How are we growing in, in terms of the gospel? How are we growing in terms of our knowledge of the Bible? Am I reading the Bible? Am I reading other books or, or listening to talks or watching video? How am I growing and how am I helping other people to grow? It's really important that we don't neglect these things just because we're in a strange, unusual, even difficult season. We're to to grow in discipleship. And that's what we see Elijah investing in Elisha. That's why life groups are really important uh, at this time. They're not just uh, something to keep us busy midweek and have some structure, although they might do that. But the, the aim of them is that we might grow ourselves and that we might encourage one another to grow. And I would encourage you, please don't neglect your life group. Don't neglect your small group. It's, it's not simply, oh, well, what do I get out of it? But actually... I mean, hopefully you, do, hopefully you do get something out of it as you pray together and encourage each other and so on. But it's also about how we might bless and serve one another, that we grow together as a community. Elijah didn't just oh, it's just me on my own. I'm only concerned with me. No, no. God said, think wider. You've got to raise up others to be like you. If I can just say to the parents, obviously parenting at the moment is, is, can be quite difficult, obviously uh, homeschooling and all these kinds of things. But I would encourage you as parents, make time to, to, uh, for your children and help them to grow in their faith. Now, we obviously as a church want to, uh, to help one another and serve one another and encourage families and young people. And I know various folks are doing that both on Sunday mornings and midweek stuff as well. But in the end, we as parents are responsible for our children. We're responsible for, for teaching and instructing them, and particularly in terms of the faith. No, the church isn't responsible. Teachers are not responsible. The government's not responsible. Parents, we are responsible for our children. God's given them to us. So let's be the best parents that we can be. And I would just encourage you, if you're a parent, worship with your children. Pray with your children. Let them see, we do this together. Encourage your children to connect with us uh, on online. Hopefully, kids, if you're watching now, you're enjoying the singing and enjoying the talks and enjoying the praying and so on, because church is as much for you as it is for anybody else. We do this together because we're a family and we want to help each other to grow. And so firstly, what we see is God sending Elijah to call Elisha to be his disciple. And then straight away, uh, uh, once, God, once Elijah calls Elisha, we see him leave his old life behind and he looks to the new thing that God has for him. He looks to the future. He's obviously, uh, as we see in the story, he's living in obscurity. He's plowing a field with his oxen and suddenly he gets caught up in a new thing that God is doing, a new thing for his life, a new plan for Elisha and for the nation. One, one moment. Elisha's life looks pretty predictable, pretty ordinary. And then suddenly, in a moment, God turns the whole thing on its head. And there's no going back from that point on. So he speaks to his parents, he slaughters the oxen, he burns the plow, just as we saw with Elijah on Mount Carmel, getting rid of the false prophets. Uh, Elisha doesn't look to his old life. He looks to the new thing. What's the new thing that God is doing? What has God got for me now? And for us, in, in just a matter of a few weeks, the whole world has changed. And things will never be the same again. Work has changed. Shopping has changed. Church life has changed. And, and while uh, one day we will go back to some things that we used to do, I think there are some things that we used to do that will probably never start again. And there are some things that we're doing now that probably will continue doing uh, when we are able to meet together. And so rather than looking back to the, to the good old days, 
Let's embrace what God is doing. Let's embrace God's future for us, even though it's different. It's not what we expected. It's not what we planned. Just like Elisha's was not what he expected. It was all pretty predictable. Suddenly God breaks in and the whole thing changes. And that's how it is for us. God is in control of everything that's going on. And he wants us to be looking to the future, not trying to recreate the past, the good old days. The Bible says, look to the future. See, I'm doing a new thing. It says, uh, don't say, why were the old days better than these? That's not wise, the Bible tells us. No, we look to the future of what God is doing. And for Elisha, there's no going back because he knows God's plans are much better than his plans for his life. And so he embraces the new future that God has in store for him. And so firstly, we see how Elijah is called to make disciples and he calls Elisha to follow him. Elisha turns from his old life and looks to the future. What's God got in store now? How does God want to use me today? How does God want to use me in this season? And then... Thirdly, though, although Elijah uh, does uh, forget the past, actually, very quickly, he gets caught up in, in uh, Elijah and impart, receives some of, as an impartation of values, an impartation of ways of doing things. And, and as you read through the story of Elisha, you see there's a lot of similarities. There's certainly some differences, but there's also a lot of similarities as soon as Elijah is taken. Elisha has to take his own steps of faith. And so like Elijah had parted the waters of the Jordan, so Elisha does that. Uh, with Elijah, food supplies didn't run out, and we see the same with Elisha. Uh, a young boy is raised from the dead by Elijah, and we see the same with uh, Elisha. And so the story goes on. Lots of similarities. Now, he's not a carbon copy. I mean, he's, he's, it's different. It's a different season. God does things differently. But nevertheless, he's a man of prayer who's moving in the power of God. And he's absorbed something from, from Elijah. These are my roots. I want to be this kind of a man of God. I want to move in power. I want God to answer my prayers the way he answered uh, Elijah's prayers. And in fact, actually, Elisha doesn't even want to just say, I want to be like Elijah. He says, I want a double portion, he says, doesn't he? Because he, he wants, he wants, I want to know more of God. I want to grow. So he doesn't forget his roots and yet he's looking to the future. And we believe that God is the same today as he has always been. He's a God of miracles. He's a God who speaks to his people and through his people. And so in this season, we mustn't forget our roots as a charismatic people as a people full of the Holy Spirit, a people who want to move in the power of God, who want to hear the voice of God. And of course, we do that through scripture, but we also believe in the prophetic. And so we want to use these gifts. We want to stir up these gifts now. Now, obviously, we're working at how we do that online. But can I encourage you, stir up these gifts, pray for miracles, pray for God to speak. You know, for the prophets among us, stir up the gift that God's put in you. And if you feel God speaking, then get in touch with us as a church, get in touch with us as an eldership team. Because in all that is changing, we don't want to forget our roots. We don't want to forget our fundamental values. God is a God of miracles. God is a God who speaks and directs. And we're praying for that now, just as we've always prayed. And so the story of Elijah reminds us God has a plan for all our lives. Even when we're weak, even when we get it wrong, God wants to restore us. He wants to use us in his kingdom. And just uh, as the transition from Elijah to Elisha was a, a, a kind of a turning point in Israel's history, so the cross marks a turning point in world history where Jesus brought an end to the old age and brings in a new world where God's kingdom is coming increasingly, bringing life and healing and salvation to everyone who believes. And so let's be those who, who look to the future. We leave the past behind and we press into all that God has in store for us. Let's pray. 
Father, we do thank you that, uh, that though we all uh, are weak and at times we all make mistakes, we all despair, we all struggle. Thank you, Father. That's not the end of the story, but actually you pick us up and you restore us. We thank you that on the cross, Jesus took away all our failures, that we might serve you in your kingdom, that we might look to the future and not the past. So help us, Lord, to, to, to break with the past, both the good things and the difficult things in our past, that we might embrace your future for us. Just like Elisha pressed in to all you had for him. Lord, in this season, let us embrace what you do have for us. Embrace the opportunities that you have for us. Not just see the difficulties, but see how you want to use us. Lord, as we move forward as a, as a church, help us to not look back to the good old days and how can we get back to those days, but say, God, what do you want to do with us in this season? How do you want to use us in this season? And in all of that, Father, we pray, help us to not uh, to, to not forget our roots, to forget our core values. We believe you're a God of miracles. You're a, a, a speaking, uh, miraculous God. You're the same yesterday, today and forever. And so our, our prayer is that you'd help us, help us to know how to move in the things of the Spirit. Help us to be a people filled with your Spirit every day, looking to hear from you and be used by you. And Father, our prayer is that, Lord, you would uh, speak to everyone watching this morning, Lord, that, uh, that if we uh, know you or whether we don't, that you would draw us into the plans that you have for us, that through Jesus we can make an end of our old life and press into a new life where we walk with you and are fruitful for you and your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. We're just going to have a, a final song and then we'll just gather again uh, for, for our prayer in a moment. Thanks, Adrian. Welcome back, guys. Yeah, let's continue to um, worship. Let's continue to, um, as we worship, just let's put trust in God um, for this coming week. Let's really um, live in his strength and um, rely on him. And yeah, let's just... Um, Let's just let's just live for him. Let's sing um, the cross stands above it all.
to you. Thank you that we can gain from your strength, Father. Thank you that we can look to you, even though we think problems are too big for us, Father. Let us share those problems with you, Father. Let us pray into those problems with you, Father God. You intercede with us, Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that comes to us and helps us in our days, Father. Let's just look and um, just, just, just ask for the Holy Spirit this week. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to hand back to Adrian, who's going to uh, wrap up. Thanks, Ollie. We're obviously in unusual times at the moment, and uh, we want to pray for God's blessing upon our nation. We want to pray for wisdom for our government, obviously uh, increasingly loosening things, uh, but wanting to see what happens in terms of the virus and so on. So we just want to pray for them and uh, for God's wisdom for them. Again, we want to pray for those working in the health sector, uh, just the, the, the challenge that they are still going through and restructuring and so much change going on. We want to pray for, for teachers and schools as some children go back, but not all. And so let's just bring some of these things uh, before the Lord and then I'll just wrap up in prayer after that. Father, we thank you that we can bring all these situations before you to the one who has stepped into world history and has uh, done it again and again in answer to prayer. And so in this time, we bring our government before you that you would lead them, give them wisdom as they look to obviously uh, health and, and safety and yet also look to, to release uh, the, the rules and the lockdown. So we just ask you please for wisdom for our government. We continue to pray for those who work in the health sector uh, that you would again protect them and keep them safe and strong, uh, help them process all the change and all the trauma uh, that they've experienced. God, we ask you for them. We thank you for them. And uh, we pray also at this time for uh, teachers and all those involved in school, for head teachers and all the changes that are going on as some children start to go back to school. Uh, we just pray again for uh, 
your hand to be upon that. Lord, we just ask you, have mercy upon our nation. And uh, above all, uh, we pray that through all of this, that many people will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. And we ask this in his name and for his glory. Amen. Oh man, again, just great to be together. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm now going to hand back to, to Dan and Rebecca for some final notices. Thanks, Adrian. Hopefully you all enjoyed that service as much as we did. And it was lovely to gather together again on a Sunday for online church. We're getting quite used to this. So... We have some notices now and we did want Esther to do the notices um, as Imogen did such a wonderful job last week but unfortunately I tried to train her up this week and she's not quite taking to it as quickly as I thought so you're going to have to deal with our faces for a little bit longer as we talk about a few things. The first notice, every week on Fridays we have our youth group and that is mainly aimed for 11 plus not year 11 plus. No, age 11 plus. Age 11 plus, plus <laughs> up to about 18, I guess. Um, that's on Friday evenings, and at the moment they're joining together over Zoom and doing games and Bible teaching and things like that. Mm. Um, and then again on a Sunday after the service, so today, um, at is it 12 o'clock they o'clock start. Me, yeah. There's another youth group, and they meet on Zoom again, and that's more aimed towards 15 plus. Yeah, we do a bit more digging into the Bible in that one and going a bit deeper and it's been really good. We've only been going since lockdown began and really great group to get to know. Uh, so this evening again, we mentioned earlier, we have got our pub quiz. We're very excited about this in our house. We're slightly competitive um, and we love a good quiz. So yeah, more details on the Facebook page, but hopefully it should all be ironed out. Really easy to join up and get answering some questions. Yeah. As we mentioned before, on Tuesdays, um, we have been, we have our Teaching Tuesdays. Are the videos released at 7.30 in the morning or the evening? 7 p.m. in the evening they are released. 7 o'clock in the evening on the watch. Facebook page, Adrian is releasing our Teaching Tuesdays videos. Like I said before, we have gone through the Book of Amos, so if you have missed any or didn't watch any and you want to catch up, they'll all be available on the Facebook page. And the current series, we're going through the Apostles' Creed. So the last one or two videos, is it two videos? And this coming weeks, um, they'll, they'll be available on the Facebook page as well. And again, the prayer meeting is this Thursday at lunchtime. So if you are at home and you're not a key worker or you're not, or you've not gone back to work and you're able to make the 12 p.m. prayer meeting on Zoom, then all the details um, for that will also be available on our church Facebook page. Yeah. So that's all the notices. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us this morning. We hope you enjoyed the service and... We look forward to seeing you in the week. Have a lovely week. Bye. Bye.